We need a hero! We need a hero at the end of the night! Welcome back guys to Fog Wrestling, it is Monday Night Raw and we finally have that superhero. Are you down with the brown? I'm down. Are you down? We're all down and especially Teddy Long is down and tonight the hurricane might be going down. Welcome back guys to the top 5 moments from January 27th, 2003, where we were in Chicago, the Allstate Arena, Chicago, and yep, yeah, it is top five moments, let's get straight into it, moment number five, Evolution interrupting Scott Steiner, and for the first time, we get to see Evolution come out as a, a group, as a, as a quad, a quadruple, a quadette, or whatever you want to call that, a four-way faction, now, Still not officially called Evolution and they're still technically not a faction. Right now, I guess Batista and Randy Orton are just two guys that are hanging around with Triple H. But we're close. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's a quad. Something that Kevin Nash doesn't have anymore. It's good seeing it. It's a green fairs in Evolution. But you know what? The substance of the promo... Hey, you want me, Steiner? Well, that means you get these free as well. Everybody knows what to know. You don't know me, and you don't know what I'm capable of. When you look of. back at Triple H, man, he was a fit. He was a fucking shite bag, wasn't he? He was. Scott Steiner wanted Triple H. Triple H basically came out and says, Well, when you get me from now on, you get these guys as well. They came down to the ring, but uh, Steiner pulled out the equalizer, that being a lead pipe. Good wee, uh, good wee segment there. Coming in at number four, we have the main event. It was Kane and RVD taking on Batista and Triple H. Uh, I mean, on one hand, you look at it and you think, well, that's a pretty big main event. On the other hand, you could go, holy crap, Batista, four months ago, was doing absolutely nothing. But, I mean, he's elevated himself now towards the top of the Raw card. And, I mean, yeah, this is back in the day when we used to get great main events every week. And, and nowadays, you can't buy a good main event. But it was good. Kane's mask got taken off. Kane had to run to the back to hide his face. This left RVD outnumbered. He wasn't going to overcome these 4 on 1 odds. He didn't overcome the 4 on 1 odds. Steiner, though, attempted to come out and overcome 4 on 1 odds, but it didn't happen for him either. He got beat down. He got the lead pipe taken away from him. And then after Evolution, or the four people, because we can't call them Evolution, they're not Evolution yet, damn it. After they came out, after they battered Steiner and left, then Jericho came out and just basically hit a series of moves on an absolute um, battered Scott Steiner. A little bit strange. You know, Steiner's laying out there bloodied and, and Jericho's just doing all these moves on him. Steiner's just not even responding. It was a weird, weird finish to Raw, but I mean, it was a decent main event. A decent main event, but it makes you just feel like the Triple H is way more willing to take on Chris Jericho than he is Scott Steiner. Yeah, speaking of Chris Jericho, he is in third place. The Chris Jericho promo where we thought he was going to come out. We thought he was going to apologise. I mean, and he kind of half apologised, but then Christian came out and he let Jericho know that he's got nothing to be sorry for, that Stacey had no business being out there, no business being in the ring, and, and JR wasn't having this. JR was pissed off at Christian. But yeah, Christian says it wasn't Jericho's fault. It was Stacey's fault. Jericho disagrees. He said it was Tess's fault for ducking the chair shot. But uh, Michaels comes out and basically says, you two need to be a man. And he beats them both up. So uh, another good segment. Yeah, I can't complain with a Shawn Michaels promo. But again, what I don't like about it is, is this whole Stacey and Tess thing. The fact that it's like over not overshadowed Jericho Michaels, but... I just don't understand the, the, the future, how we end up at No Way Out with Jeff Hardy and Jericho, so it's not really a problem with the segment, but it's like, surely the feud going forward has to be Test against Jericho. At No Way Out? Yeah. Or some what? sort of tag team match or something? Yeah, where does Jeff Hardy get flung here from? Did someone, someone, I was going to say someone not allowed to travel, but I mean, that, that kind of sounds like fucking Jeff Hardy not allowed to travel in the Canada. Down, 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 down. Anyway, Jeff Hardy is not travelling into the top two spots on our list. But someone who is, is Terry Long. He cut a promo talking about the lack of diversity, the lack of black superheroes. He says there was one guy who used to be a superhero, but he couldn't do anything. He shot thunder out of his ass. He wasn't any good. But now the black community, black people, have a real superhero, a man that they can believe in. 
And it's not Joe Hendry. It's D'Lo Brown. And Terry Long says, we better get down with the Brown. And he sends D'Lo Brown out to beat up on another white boy. In the name of the hurricane. Great promo for Teddy Long. Who would have thought that some of the best stuff early 2003 would have been Teddy Long and D'Lo Brown? I would not have thought it. I thought D'Lo Brown was snookered. I thought the black was behind the white, pun intended. But, yeah, good for him. Good for Teddy Long. And you know what? It just shows you that even someone like Teddy Long is fucking a million miles better than half the people you get today. I enjoy this Teddy Long managerial... Um, black empowerment run better than his GM run. Well, no, but there you go. But you know, this guy was a referee for decades at this point, but twenty years, and it's like they've got like a hidden gem there the whole time. Yeah, that yeah. they, they, they utilised, and it's like people actually come out though and say that like Adam Pearce and Nick Aldas are leagues above this guy. Sounds like racism to me. Sounds like fucking racism to me. Terry Long, way better than those two chumps. I mean, look at this guy. He had a great career, right, as a referee. Stopped being a referee. And at that point, you probably think that's him done. You know what I mean? He'll maybe hang around. Maybe he can be, you know, backstage. But then, then he prolongs his career by, like, at least another decade. Yeah. First by being a manager and then later on becoming a GM. So, yeah, Terry Long. Prolonging it. Doing a great job. Right, coming in, first place, number one, we have the Tag Team Tables match for the Tag Team Titles. I mean, it was a tables match by name, but not really a tables match by nature, because Chief Morley screwed over the Dudleys. Dudleys thought they had it won, beat down Lance Storm, beat down William Regal, tried to retrieve the tables, and there was absolutely no tables underneath the ring, and the Dudleys got well played here. But don't worry, Chief Morley... Had a table of his own. We've seen three minute warning come down. Beat up the Dudley. Spike tried to make the save. It did not work. And in the end, the Dudleys got put through Chief Morley's table. And Lance Storm and William Regal retained their titles. Car Crash TV interferences, reveals, plot twists. Match had it all. This is exactly how you book a tag team match like this with the heels to win. You think the Dudleys are going to win. The heel comes up, then the, then their wee returning brother comes back, and Chief Moyley's like, no. But nowadays you just get a boring 25 minute match. And that's what people want, in it? No. No surprises, nothing special happening, no wee twists or turns, just a simple boring 25 minute wrestling match. wrestling wrestling is good, man. See the matches on free TV, they were normal normality, they were like, you know interfered there was loads of interference and shit like that as there so, should be as there should be because and then it saved like the proper wrestling matches for the pay-per-view see these days man every, it's like every fucking match on raw it has to go 30 minutes yeah 30 minutes two ad breaks anyway guys that's our top five moments for this raw let us know what you think down below we'll catch you in the next one in terms of the classic refuse up next we have ecw and we have the <laughs> the third match in the what feels like 100 match uh, rivalry between CM Punk and Chavo Guerrero. So, yeah, make sure you stay tuned for that. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, though, peace.